This is Astrid 2, a micro-satellite developed by the Science Systems Division of the Swedish Space Corporation. Its scientific missions are to explore electric and magnetic fields in the upper ionosphere and to measure neutral and charged particles and electron density. Modern technology has turned small satellites into powerful tools of science. Astrid, here undergoing spin balance test, is a small compact satellite with a weight of 30 kilos and its dimensions are only 95 by 45 by 40 centimeters with stowed solar panels. Astrid was designed and built in 24 months for roughly 2 million US dollars. This high performance, low cost space research satellite is derived from the successful Freya satellite but scaled down to 10% of its mass. The Freya platform was also designed by the Swedish Space Corporation and launched in 1992. Here is Freya at SSC's S-Range facility in Kiruna undergoing radio system tests. The mass at launch was 256 kilos. The scaled down compact concept was first used in Astrid 1 launched in 1995 which carried experiments designed by Swedish space scientists. And there is continuous great interest among scientists for projects based on the Astrid 1 concept. A new project was carried on and in December 1996 Swedish Space Corporation brings Astrid 2 to the first integrated system tests in Kiruna. This is the first time that all the platform systems and experiments meet on the integrated satellite. The test to be performed is the thermal balance test or the solar simulation test where the satellite will be submitted to a similar environment to space. The main purpose is to verify that the thermal control system is properly designed. For this reason a number of thermocouples which help measure the temperatures are installed on the satellite. Here we see one of the experiments, a completely new instrument in space, a combined ion and electron spectrometer. On the outside there are two photometers mounted for measurement of ultraviolet light from the aurora. The bottom platform is covered with a multi-layer insulation blanket and the side faces with black single sheet foil in order to control the temperature of the satellite. The solar panels are replaced by dummies and equipped with foil heaters for temperature simulation. The satellite is positioned with its bottom facing the sun, just as in space. Astrid 2 is a sun pointing spinning satellite and always projects its bottom faced to the sun. It's positioned in the same way in the chamber where the sun is simulated with strong lamps. The vacuum pumps evacuate the air and the tank walls are cooled with liquid nitrogen to minus 180 degrees. And the temperatures are logged for later evaluation. Ja, mycket. Okej, är ni klara? Ja, vi spanar. Då kör vi 200 varv. Astrid 2 has a specially designed mechanism for deploying the wire booms of the electric field experiment. It has wire guiding mechanisms fastened on a drive belt which moves around the complete satellite body driven by a stepper motor. The belt drive and all the moving parts are carefully tested. Så det bra? The wire booms with their electric field probes are initially wound up around the entire satellite body. The probes are released by pyro guillotines by ground command and slowly reeled out by the belt drive mechanism to their full length of 3.1 meters each. 
Data from the satellite is sent down at a rate of 128 kilobits per second to the Astrid 2 S-band control and data reception station located at the Swedish Space Corporation headquarters at Solna. This small and low-cost unit is also developed by the Swedish Space Corporation. A similar station for data reception only will be placed in the Antarctic. All RF units on the satellite and in the ground station have been tested at Swedish Space Corporation, from unit level up to integrated end-to-end -end tests. Here the output spectrum of the uplink transmitter is checked. Astrid 2 is a sun-pointing spinner and projects six solar cell panels to the sun, of which four are deployed. The panels give a maximum of 75 watts in total. Here the deployment and latching is verified in a simple test setup. After the spin-up rockets have stabilized the satellite, the solar panels are deployed. Magnetic torque coils are used to steer the spin axis close to the sun, using either commands generated from the ground station or an automatic onboard algorithm called the Sun Seeker. In order to have a well-known and stable spin axis, the fully equipped satellite has to be spin balanced, just like a car wheel. The balancing machine determines the static and dynamic unbalanced forces, and small weights are attached for compensation. Astrid 2 will be launched from Plesetsk in Russia as a piggyback on a Russian satellite at an 83 degree inclination circular orbit at 1,000 kilometers altitude. Okay, now show the low vibration in 6.5 G, just 10 seconds. Now show it. This vibration test simulates the static acceleration forces of the launch vehicle, the Cosmos rocket. The satellite with all its sensitive equipment is also tested in a random vibration. The experiments on board are the electric and magnetic field experiment with the wire boom system, the particle spectrometer, the UV photometers, and two deployable Langmuir probes measuring electron density. On top of the satellite, on a deployed stiff boom, are an experiment magnetometer and a new, small, extremely accurate star imager. Here we see a prototype of the boom on a horizontal deployment test stand. The resistance of the cold and stiff cabling is also taken into account. The boom has to show very good pointing repeatability without any joint gaps in order to give useful data from the instruments. Astrid 2, a high-performance, low-cost space research platform developed and controlled by the Science Systems Division of the Swedish Space Corporation. <laughs>